This afternoon, I ate the worst sandwich I have ever eaten in my entire life. I got it out of a vending machine with a bag of chips and a Coke Zero, and it cost me $11. And that is the scariest thing in this video. You know me, the fighting freak Knuckles, and we're at Pumpkin Hill. You ready? So I wanted to make a video about Halloween games. You know, I feel like there's there's kind of two genres out there. There's like the horror game and the Halloween game. Because really, in, in my head, when I think of a game like Silent Hill, Resident Evil, or even the newly released Outlast Trials, which I did play during Halloween time. What do we need to do again? Goose Fairy's gonna come through this door and I'm gonna stun her and then there's gonna be a big guy blocking the door. We just gotta run past him and stun him. Okay, yeah, I'll stun him. Let's go. Okay, now throw it against this guy. They're just more horror and scary and they're kind of fun to play during Halloween. But I really wanted to deep dive into what is a Halloween game. When I think of a Halloween game, usually the, the games I play on Halloween is usually Castlevania. For a long time, every Halloween, or the day before Halloween, depending how busy I was on Halloween, I'd always play Super Castlevania 4. That was my favorite one for so long growing up. But every now and again, a boy has to become a man. And the boy realizes that the best Castlevania game is not Super Castlevania 4, but is in fact Castlevania Rondo of Blood. It just is better. And I know Symphony of the Night's its own thing, and Symphony of the Night really is Rondo of Blood too. Like, they share so much the same DNA. They play completely different. Juan's a Metroid game. Juan's an actual action game. Um, so, I think Rondo of Blood owns. But I started screwing around trying to find what is a Halloween game. So the first game I want to talk about is Mr. Bones on Sega Saturn. So Mr. Bones on Saturn's a weird one. Like... I actually wanted to make this whole video about Mr. Bones, but then I ended up playing Mr. Bones. See, there's a whole thing where you thinking about playing Mr. Bones sounds really fun. And then actually playing Mr. Bones is not very fun. <laughs> this game sucks. Like, I haven't had such a bad time playing a video game in quite a while. <laughs> So, Mr. Bones is a vibe. I'll give it that. The, the cutscenes are really funny, um, and, you know, there is a good vibe to Mr. Bones. Excuse me, did I miss something? What's going on? Oh, I see. <laughs> nice talking to you. It's one of, like, the few Sega Saturn, like exclusive games that isn't by Sega and it's just I, I don't know what it is is it a platformer because the first level okay you, you open up Mr. Bones you play the first level and it's an auto scroller and then the second level you're you're I think it's called the mausoleum you're, you just dodge skeletons for a while and then you have to kill the skeletons eventually. Game doesn't tell you you have to kill the skeletons you just gotta find out that okay now it's kill skeleton time and then the third level is an actual side-scrolling platformer game. All of the mechanics of Mr. Bones are baffling because the whole point is Mr. Bones can disassemble. And if you like fall from too great a height, he'll just explode. 
There's just a button to make Mr. Bones explode. And there's times where you can just get locked because you lost your legs. And you have to run all the way back to get your legs back. Um, and don't even get me started when you die, okay? When you die in Mr. Bones, first you get this, this cutscene every time. Mr. Bones! Ah! Oh, Mr. Bones dead. Is that what happens when Mr. Bones dies? It takes you back to the main menu. And on the main menu, you have two options. New games and either settings or options. I don't really remember it offhand. When I first died in the second level, I thought, uh, is this just a one and done? Like, do I have to straight shot this game? But no, you go into settings and then in settings, then you will find level select which then shows you all of the levels I could have played, but did not get the chance to. And then you select the level that you were on. But if you go too quick and you just mash A through it, you'll hit new game, and then you have to wait again to go back to the main menu. It is the most baffling system I've ever seen in my life. Now, Mr. Bones is worth it for the cutscenes, so I would just recommend looking up a cutscenes of Mr. Bones. So Mr. Bones Halloween game has Halloween vibes. Now I was searching and I want to do something modern because I always feel like on this channel I'm just talking about old crap all the time. And granted, I guess many people would consider PS2 still old crap, but in my brain it's still recent enough. So we're talking about Nightmare Before Christmas on PlayStation 2. Put me down this instant! So Nightmare Before Christmas Oogie's Revenge on PS2 came out in 2005, more than 10 years after the original film. I don't know who, who got this together and decided let's make this video game. Um, in Japan it didn't come out till 2007, two years after the American release. It's a really cool game though, it was developed by the same team that developed Kingdom Hearts 2 and directed by the same guy who directed Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. So that's probably the coolest thing about this game. The game's kind of a hack and slash beat em up kind of game. It's got the Halloween Town thing going on. Maybe they just liked what Kingdom Hearts 2 did in Halloween Town and thought, let's make a whole game about it. There's musical numbers in it, just like in the original movie. They just sing a lot. The game's pretty good, it's pretty repetitive, but I think it's worth a shot. That's the Halloween holiday door. Now what in the world is that doing here? Now a big popular thing um, that's kind of caught on over the past few years is like PS1 horror, you know? And that's like the vibe a lot of people are trying to go for. Um, like No One Lives Under the Lighthouse, that's a really cool game. Um, all of the puppet combo games, I'm not going to talk about any of them because that's a whole other video. But like the low poly PS1 horror is like really popular right now. And so I thought, well, what is actual PS1 horror? So I pulled up Alone in the Dark. I think this is Jack's Revenge. There's a handful of Alone in the Dark games on PS2. And I've played the original. I actually beat the original Alone in the Dark because it was like, three dollars for every single one on steam once and so i beat the first one which not that great of a time um and whatever this ps1 game is it just really sucks oh no what is this devious chunk of pixels doing what is he up to 
What a weird way to open your video game. With like eight loading screens. Okay, we're gonna get a load. Five bucks, we get a load. Yep. Boom, 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 boom. Please wait. Like, if you can't, like, reasonably do a cutscene. Oh my gosh. Seriously? Like, I get that there were limitations of the hardware, but, like, Final Fantasy didn't do this. Even show. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know. This is the this is the opening cutscene. I haven't even played the game and I'm annoyed. <laughs> oh, what the heck is that? Oh, he's dead? Come on! This is like the worst cutscenes I've ever experienced in a game. What is this zombie game? I feel really awful. Yeah, how many times have we gotten freaking shot up by zombies. What the heck is this game? <laughs> do, do. Really? The sow the sad clown song? to the consensus I think I found I think I found the perfect in my opinion the perfect Halloween game now it's not one you might think like costume quest or anyone that's actually like Halloween itself but what I found is on the Nintendo Entertainment System and that my friends is Monster Party so Monster Party on the NES is a game I've known about for a little while I wasn't going to talk about it because John Tron made a video on it, has millions of views, and I thought, I'm not going to talk about Monster Party. But then I realized, that video is 14 years old. There are people watching this video right now who were not alive when that video came out, and they're in junior high. Mark was walking home from a ball game. He looked up and... Saw a bright star. You can tell he's Mark because he's got an M on his shirt. While he stared at it, the star got bigger and bigger. G good for him. Is he crying? The beauty of the star made his eyes moist. Okay, that answers that question. So he didn't notice that the star fell and landed right in front of him. I love NES text boxes. What, wait, what the freak? <laughs> it was, it wasn't a star, but a monster? Who are you? I am, his name's Bert. The monster's name is Bert. What's up? <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I would say if I encountered one of these bad boys myself. I'm looking for help. Evil monsters are out of control in my world. Come and help me. Why would he do that? I am afraid to fight the- e He didn't say- Did they say they were evil? Did he add that adjective? Don't- Your weapon. You will be able to destroy them easily. What- What weapon? The, the baseball bat? This isn't a weapon. Yeah, you tell him, Mark. You tell him. Bat- Bat- ba Batter? Anything is- what, what is that- What does that mean? Oh, and so he just, okay, he grabs Mark uh, by his, against his will and says, let's do it. Oh, Mark's fine. Oh, what's your name? Mark. Mark, my planet is dangerous. Well, then why are you taking this child? So we must act how... <laughs> are they, like, melting? <laughs> this is how Mark's adventure began. Oh, my gosh. A good gauge to tell how good an NES game is, is how good your main attack is. Now the weird thing about Monster Party is your main attack sucks balls. 
It literally is just a bat. It's short as heck, and you're not doing too much with it. The first enemy you fight looks like Ringo Ishikawa from that game that maybe one person knows what I'm talking about. He beats you up, he throws crap at you, but you got a stupid bat. There's one door, you walk in the door, and it's an eggplant that wants to kill you. Now, how you kill the eggplant, now I guess this is unique, you knock the bubbles back at him and he dies. This guy has so much health, it's actually really annoying to kill him. But your first boss is an eggplant. And then eventually if you take these pills, you turn into the monster, which I guess is like the first cutscene, and then you can actually do things. Now, the strategy to beat the first level of the game is to turn into the monster and just beeline for the jack-o'-lantern boss. Because the jack-o'-lantern boss will mess you up. And so if you are not, if you are not the dragon, you are not beating him. But as the dragon, you'll beat that guy up. So the whole point of Monster Party is you gotta kill all of the bosses that give you the key that you can exit the level. Now the first level starts out kinda cute and NES-like. Then it turns full-on demonic. The second level is a sewer and underground. Because I guess since Super Mario's second level is a sewer and underground, every NES game's second level is that. So one of the most unique parts of Monster Party is all of the monsters. You have obviously the eggplant, but you also have just shrimp and an onion ring. There's a minotaur that shoots cows. There's a guy with a guitar, a samurai, a cat, and well, even death himself. So the last thing I want to talk about with Monster Party is the final level. Now before you get to the final level, you have to get through level 6, which level 6 just sucks so bad. It's some maze, some haunted mansion maze, and without uh, Max123 on GameFAQs from 2005 with his uh, <laughs> map he made in MS Paint, I would have never finished it. But shout out to Max, we made it to the last level. And in the last level, it just drops you right in the middle. So you actually need to head left to go to this church to fight one of the bosses. The game, you know, doesn't indicate any of that. You've never had to go left throughout this whole game. But the final level, you have to go left. So once you finally do it, you make it to the final boss. And the final boss is horrors beyond your comprehension. Did I beat the game? Oh, I guess we beat the game. Um, okay. Mark destroyed the monsters. Bert gave him a gift. A, a see-through gift? A transparent gift? Oh, and Mark just went home. Oh, now it's not transparent. He excitedly opened the box. And a beautiful princess came out. Okay. Um, is that legal? Oh. Wait, did Bert give us a bad gift? <laughs> Wait, was Bert the bad guy? More monsters followed her. Oh, sh shoot, dude. <laughs> what is this? Is this what kind of ending is this? Mark was scared and screamed. Well, Mark, you just did kind of take a What the heck? <laughs> did he just melt? Oh. They did that to us. That's so lame. By his- You'll be late! Oh, well that's so lame. What a dumb cup- uh, Yeah, he's just like, yeah, I'm leaving! Oh shoot! Bert's back! With the bat! He's even got the bat! Why is he holding the bat like- Wait, now it's the credits? That's how it ends? What the heck? So those are some of the Halloween games I wanted to talk about today. 
Um, there's a handful of other ones I kind of want to talk about, but I need this video out by, like, tomorrow as of filming this. Like, this needs to come out on Halloween, or, like, I'm screwed, because who wants to watch a Halloween video on November 1st? Um, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> subscribe. The ruggedness, knock knock his knuckles, the blow thrower, independent flower, magical emerald holder, give you the colder shoulder, my spike goes through boulders, that's why I stay alone, I was born by myself, I don't need a pot, I get it on by myself, adversaries get shelved.